right now on Denver 7 News at 4. A dad raises concerns after finding homeless people living under the windows at his daughter's school. I don't feel comfortable taking that chance right next to the school. What the school district is saying about what's going on. Rising gas prices are impacting cities trying to keep up with road maintenance. How it's forcing construction crews to pivot. We'll take a look at the potential long-term impact for all of us. And as we see a rise in gun violence nationwide, we're going inside a program that is seeing success, focusing on the people who are most at risk, how it is getting them to change their thinking and help break the cycle. And it may be May 20th, but here comes the snow. We'll tell you just how long it's gonna fall and when it will be warm enough to melt. And we start today with that weather alert. This is a live look at the CDOT camera along US 6, just east of baseline. We've been seeing snow alternating with rain for pretty much most of the day. Now, if you're here in the metro, this may be what it looks like outside your window right now. This is a live look from our roof rooftop camera here at the studio at Spear and Lincoln. A big change from the 80 plus degree temperatures that we've gotten used to really over this week. We're going to start our team coverage with meteorologist Stacy Donaldson. Stacy, you told us it was coming. Here it is. That's right. Big fat flakes flying in Boulder and a very temperature sensitive storm. So as the con temperature continues to fall for the rest of the day, we'll see more snowfall here across the front range. But as you head out the door, it's going to be wet no matter where you are, whether it's flakes or rain that's falling. As for the rest of the day, we'll see a rain snow mix for the next few hours and then changing over to snow later on tonight. And at this point, you see that most of the rain is across eastern Colorado from Greeley to Akron to Sterling, where temperatures are a little bit warmer. And then up in the high country, we definitely have snow falling. We had a report earlier up at Steamboat of eight inches of snow having fallen so far, and it's still coming down in our central mountains. Here for the Front Range and the foothills, we have snowfall as well, but we're seeing a little, a little line there of rain right down through the metro area where the temperatures are a little bit warmer. Uh, temperatures now are in the 30s, but it feels like it's in the 20s with the wind chill. We have a winter storm morning that stretches from Fort Collins down through Denver and Colorado Springs from now through tomorrow morning and winter weather advisories in the purple shaded areas. Now a freeze warning is also in effect tonight, so bring in or cover any vulnerable plants tonight because those temperatures will be below freezing, but your uh, sprinkler systems, they're going to be fine tonight. This is not a hard freeze, but it will be cold enough to hurt your plants. 28 degrees with snowfall tonight, and then we're going to be talking about more snow tomorrow. I'll let you know how much we expect across the area coming up in a few minutes. Any more to talk about, Stacey. Thank you. Let's head out into the weather now. Our Colette Bordelon is up in Georgetown this evening. Can Colette, how are conditions for those still hoping to spend the weekend in the mountains? Probably end up looking like you. Yeah, I mean, you can tell it's sticking just by looking at my jacket. I'm sure my hair, but the snow is starting to stick out here in Georgetown. Some really fat flakes we're seeing. We're right off the 70. You can see cars taking it pretty slowly on the highway there. It is definitely deteriorating. We've been out here for maybe two hours, hour and a half. This is not what the roads looked like when we first got here. You could actually see the pavement. Now it's getting a little bit, you know, more gray. It's turning more white, getting a little bit slushy. People taking it nice and slowly, though. Of course, visibility, not great. You really can't see more than, what, 100 yards in front of you out here. This parking lot we're in, you can really start to see how that snow is accumulating out here closer to the mountains, of course. And if you get further along 70, closer to Vail, it's got to be worse out there. 70, always a tricky drive in conditions like this. But of course, we know this. I know it's May. I know it's late May, but really, this is what we've come to expect in Colorado. Am I right, Jason? <laughs> well, maybe not in May, Colette, but yes, if you're going to head <laughs> up to I-70 during a snowstorm, you should be prepared as if it was January or February. Our Colette Bordelon out reporting along I-70 tonight. Colette, thank you. Now, all this cold, wet weather really putting a damper on some high school graduations, especially the outside ones. This is what it was like for Evergreen High School grads and their families during this morning's ceremony out at Red Rocks. Hard to stay dry in all that rain. Let's get over now to Denver 7's Russell Haythorn. He's at the First Bank Center in Broomfield right now, one of the many venues trying to help grads and their families stay warm and dry. Russell, a change of venue, what the doctor ordered. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. A change of venue, Jason. The scene outside the First Bank Center here in Broomfield says it all. The sign reads, congrats, grads. It sits on top of a green lawn, but that green lawn partially covered in a fresh blanket of white snow. Who would have ever thought that the class of 2022 would be graduating on May 20th in a snowstorm? 
But as Colette said, here we are. This is Colorado. We have some video to show you from earlier graduation ceremonies and for that matter, events throughout the metro area and along the front range being moved inside from outdoor venues over at the Denver Coliseum, for example, this afternoon. Chatfield High moved its ceremony from Red Rocks because of the snow. Not exactly what the graduates had in mind, but they all seem to be taking it in stride. It's a group of kids that has certainly had an eventful high, high school career, and they have learned to adapt. With COVID and whatnot, we really just have learned to adapt, and this is kind of the testament to it all. I feel like all things considered, we're honestly pretty lucky compared to the last couple classes we've had. I mean, we got prom this year. Uh, graduating class of 2021, didn't have a prom. That is certainly an optimistic view. So up next here at the First Bank Center, it's the Centaurus graduation that has been moved from an outdoor venue. That's at five o'clock this evening. Monarch had its graduation here just about an hour ago. And then over at the Denver Coliseum, Columbine High School is up next at seven o'clock this evening. And then as for those track and field championships and lacrosse championships for high school this weekend, those have been moved from Friday and Saturday to Sunday and Monday. Hopefully the weather improves by then. For now, we're live out here in Broomfield in a snowstorm on May 20th. I'm Russell Haythorn. Back to you. Yeah, enjoy those graduation parties too this weekend, Russell. Thank you. Now we want to see your pictures and video of the snow. Just tag us on Facebook, on Twitter, or on Instagram. We have some pictures to share with you from Shannon Lukens up in Steamboat Springs earlier today. And then one of my favorites from Marsha Hobart in Glenhaven. She says that colorful bird grabbing a bite to eat in the snow is a western tanager. A little yellow and red pop in the white. Now, don't forget, you can always get the latest weather information on your favorite streaming device. Just download the Denver 7 Plus app. Topping the news feed, President Biden is in Asia today visiting a computer chip factory in South Korea. Asia produces the majority of the microchips that have been in short supply. Samsung is building a similar chip plant in Texas. The top economies in the world are sending nearly $20 billion in aid to Ukraine. This money is to help bolster Ukraine's financial situation as the war with Russia continues. And new insight into why COVID is deadlier for men. Doctors think estrogen could protect against severe COVID. A new study in the journal Family Practice finds that women who received hormone replacement therapy after having the virus had a 78% lower overall mortality rate than those who didn't. The leaked Supreme Court draft opinion regarding the future of Roe v. Wade has workers wanting to make sure their employers have their backs. Some Justice Department workers are calling on the Biden administration to require federal agencies to give time off if they need to travel for an abortion. Just this week, big name companies like MasterCard and Starbucks joined the growing number of private companies pledging to pay the travel costs for employees who don't have access where they live. Companies are also pledging to cover travel costs for gender confirming procedures. I think as states limit some health procedures, we may continue to add to the list of issues that employers are thinking through whether they would support access to that benefit through travel if necessary. Medical travel benefits aren't new. Katie Johnson with the American Benefits Council says that companies pay for employees to get procedures like knee replacements at better facilities if there's not one nearby. With more remote work, she says it could become even more common. If you have a network of providers in a specific geographic region, which used to work fine, right? Because your employees all worked at headquarters and now you're allowing people to work throughout the country. What does that mean for either expanding provider networks or providing travel benefits in some circumstances? Johnson says as companies give their health plans a look now, more could consider adding travel benefits in the future. Now, the rising cost of gas and inflation are driving up the cost of materials for construction projects nationwide. The impact that you could see on the road long term because of this. And today's cold, wet weather is good news for some people here in Colorado. We'll tell you who's celebrating after the break. And there may still be some time to protect some of your plants and trees during this cold snap. We have the details you need to know.